Well, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. We're gonna get to the roll bar today, or over the next day or two. So, one of the first things we need to do is we made these plates quite a while back get up here, and I've got some places where I filled in some holes in the floor, so I need to grind all that off, and I need to knock the slag off of these and clean up this area so it'll be ready for uh, so I could weld to it. So then I got to do the same thing on the other side and then also behind the wheel wells on each side. So that's the first step. And once we've got that done and these plates sitting in place, then we can start figuring out what our measurements are going to be for the main hoop. Okay, so we've got all of the metal ground or the welds ground and the uh, wire wheeled all the paint off everything and then I sprayed it all with a weld through primer as well as the bottom of the plates that are going to be the feet for the main hoop. And we're to the point where we need to go ahead and design our roll bar so we can figure out how much tubing we need to get out and uh, where the bins are going to be and all that. So some of the things we need to think about are how we're going to install this roll bar and you know is it bolted together or welded in is it actually a roll bar or a show bar? Because in reality, what we're about to build, I keep calling it a roll bar, it's really a show bar in that it is not tied directly to the frame and therefore you're kind of building this capsule of the body, but the body could still be ripped from the frame and, and the whole body and, and people will be ejected with it. So it, you're kind of building a capsule, but you're not really building a structural roll bar because it's not tied into the frame. I don't plan on going out and doing some heavy four-wheeling with this. This is more just a play around with truck, go out and run some some dirt roads, maybe go up into Colorado and you know just some regular trails. Um, yes you could still get yourself in trouble but I don't plan on going out and getting myself, I don't want to get myself into a situation where I get into trouble. So the reason I, I ask those other questions is because if you're going to bolt it together, you're going to build a hoop, you're going to, maybe you're going to build a couple tubes and then you're going to swedge them so that you can put another tube inside it and come around, come back down, same thing on the other side, and then you're going to run a bolt through here and here and maybe you've got another one up here and you can bolt the whole thing together and it, it, maybe it holds lights on on the bit of your pickup or something or or whatever. That is not a roll bar. It will not protect you. In fact, it's liable to be more dangerous to you in the case of, of a, uh, an actual rollover because nothing is structurally sound there. Uh, there are some bolt-in cages out there on the market. Um, uh, Ride Tech, I think, makes one called Tiger Cage, which is bolt-in and people rave about it and it is supposed to be a a, a good quality uh, safety cage. So I, I don't know how it's all tied in and I don't know what vehicles they offer it for but I have read some different things about it and it seems to be a really good product. We're not building that either. The other thing is, is if you're going to weld it in, which we're doing, uh, whenever you get to your you get your main hoop and then you got your down bars going behind the wheel wells or maybe you've got door bars or whatever coming forward, how are you going to attach all these? Again, you could build some sleeves, you could put them, slide them in, you could bolt it together, and even if the main hoop is one still one full structure, these other pieces could bolt in, and you could conceivably get yourself a, a strong cage type product that would protect you. And all of it can be welded outside on a bench, and then you can have little plates in here, and you bolt it in through the floor, and off you go. We're not building that either. Um, what we're building is as close to a cage as I can get without tying it into the frame. And we're not doing a full cage. We're going to do, I think, four points. I, I don't think I'm going to do any more. We're going to do some, a main hoop. We're going to come off of it with a couple of down bars that will reach behind the rear wheel wells and we're going to weld this joint, we're going to weld this joint, we're going to weld this joint and this joint. And that's going to be, and then, oh, and back here as well, we'll weld those to some floor plates and the plates will be welded to the floor. Now, we have a, essentially a convertible. We can take the top off this truck, so 
wherever this point ends up in this corner, I can weld 360 around it because I can take the top off and get to it. Uh, same thing on the plates down here. We can we can get everything set and tacked in, take these, take it all apart, weld the plates to the feet, and then put it back in and then weld the feet to the truck. So we can get 360 welds. If you can't get a 360 weld, you've got another issue, and that you know will be is how you're going to make that a safe and secure joint. Sometimes the only way to do it on a hardtop car is to lower the height of the bar so that you can get your TIG welder or your MIG welder around the top of it to inside the roof. And of course, you can't have your uh, your headliner in and stuff like that. You need as much room as you can get in there. But it really just depends on what you're trying to build and what kind of vehicle it is. Um, a lot of cars, as you come up the inside of the of the body, you get to about the top of the door and then the car pivots in and then you need your, and so you've got to put a bend in here so that these can be mostly vertical, you know, maybe they're on some angle, but then you can make the angle as the top comes in. The Scout is different yet. Um, it looks like it's got that, but when you really start getting in there and measuring, what it really is, is the whole inside of the truck is at, a, is at an angle. And it's this angle to the floor is 84 degrees. So we, have, we don't need that intermediate bend. If we wanted to make this a full straight up 90, we'd have to come out quite a few inches to be able to go vertical all the way up to the top. And then we need a bend up here. Some cars, see, I'm, I've never claimed to be an artist. Some cars will also need a bend in the middle. You'll have your top come up and it'll kind of come up at an angle and back down if you're trying to keep it real tight to the headliner. Um, and when I've done those, I put them in a tubing roller and I kind of roll that in so that it matches the roof line of the car. And then when the headliner's in there, it just clears it all the way across. The Scout doesn't have that either. It's basically got a uh, hard inside headliner in that top. And it's pretty much just straight across. There's a few, you know, beauty lines in it or whatever you want to call them. But this is going to be a pretty simple main hoop. So if we want the top parallel with the bottom, and I d we're going to look at some measurements here, and if I can draw, we're doing a two inch piece of tubing, okay? We need to know the center line. We're going to work off center lines of the tubing, and I know I didn't draw that very well. But I know that I want the top of this roll bar to this floor at, at the corners and in the middle to be 41 inches tall. So to the center line, it's 40 inches to the center line of the main of the top bar. Okay? Down here. So my outside measurement, the max I could have is 59 and a quarter inches. I've got my numbers over here. I've already taken my measurements so that we could work through this. So the max, it would be touching both sides, would be 59 and a quarter. Well, I'm using two inch tubing, so I need to subtract an inch for each side. So that gets me down to 57 and a quarter. And that would, that would be touching the sides. So we need to adapt that again and what we're going to have is you know I want enough room that that probably don't want to be able to put your fingers in there because then if as things move you know the body shakes or or if you were holding on to it and you did roll your fingers would get pinched but you want enough room that it's not rubbing the the inside paint off of it either so we're going to subtract um, I'm probably going to go and just do like three-eighths of an inch off of each side, so 57 and a quarter minus 
two three eight two times three eighths that's three quarter so we're down to a fifty six and a half and that's center line to center line so that's going to be our measurement from this center line to this center line which is going to give us a fifty eight and a half outside to outside and I'm going to write that number down over here so that I don't lose it so at the top the maximum width allowable is 52 and 3 quarter and we're the same 3 quarter that we subtracted down there we're going to subtract that 3 quarter so that gets us to 52 and then we need center line to center line 2 inch tubing means the center line is 1 inch in on each side so that's minus 2 so we're up to a 50 inch 50 inch center line to center line measurement at the top the middle is just going to work off that angle because we're not going to put any bends in it. Um, and then we need, our, our dies are a 6 inch radius. So we're going to bend this on a 6 inch radius wherever that comes out. So what we need to know is if we started on this tube, where are we going to start our bend? Where, are we going to, where is that bend going to end so that we can start the next bend? Where is that bend going to end so we know where to cut this off? And then we're going to cut these off at that take six degrees off that bottom plane so that it'll sit in there with the top parallel to the roof. So we're going to go over to the computer. I'm going to introduce you to a free software that's online called BenditOnline.com. I've used them for years. We could draw all this out on the concrete and get an actual full-size version of it and we'd, we'd get to the math or we'd get to the, to the dimensions just as easily. Well, we would get to them. This is way easier. So we're going to go over to the computer, I'm going to show you, I'm going to introduce all these numbers and then we're going to get our basic information for this design. So what we have here is BenditOnline.com. It's a great free software for calculating out your uh, main hoop roll bar. Doesn't have other numbers and all that, although I've used it at times to, to kind of like build half of, like think of half of the roll bar hoop and do my, my down bars in the back. Ours is basically is a real basic uh, roll bar. So we're gonna select uh, over here, how many total bins in your project? We're gonna select two. Uh, the next thing is up here at the top, we need uh, six inches for our, six inches for the radius of the tool we're using. And then remember we were working center line to center line, so the length on that uh, first bend is 40 inches. And the length of bin number three, so we can skip all the way down to there, that's also 40. Uh, and then it needs to know the distance between our uprights. And we calculated that out just a minute ago at uh, 50 inches center line to center line. And then it wants to know what angle we want here. Well, we said the R bars are starting out at an 84 degree angle on each side and we want the top parallel to the bottom. So the only way to do that is the other half of a triangle is to give us a 96 degree angle in both corners. Now I'm gonna plug that in and here's the problem. This software cannot handle <laughs> that these legs are already in a, in a slant. So let me, let me enter that. You can see here, Bend angle is not between 1 and 90. Hit back and redo it. Alright, so one of the things I don't think I explained really well yesterday was this angle up here. Because I noticed when I was bending it, I started talking about an 84 degree angle. So if we measure the inside of this, we can see that if that's 90, then this is greater than 90. But when our tubing bender bends the tubing, it's a straight pipe. And then the die is right here, and it takes this side and slowly bends it around that die so that it goes like this. So, whereas this is 96, if this was a straight pipe, this side over here is 84, because the total has to be 180. So, our machine measures this side, not this side. So, I just wanted to make sure I cleared that up. Um, why I was bending the tubing to 84 degrees and not 96 degrees. So, okay, hopefully you can see this. So we have the 41 inches and then 
because of the little video clip I just showed you, we have 84 degrees, which gives us this inside angle, well, not the inside angle, but the outside angle that's actually being bent. And then our next measurement, 50 inches, and then another 84 degrees and 41. One of the things I learned from doing my test bend is I, on this two inch tubing, I need to add about 4.4 degrees, 4.5 degrees of uh, additional bend for the spring back in this two inch tubing. So um, you'll hear me talking about 88 degrees or 88 and a half degrees later on in the video. And that's where that's coming from. So it's the uh, 84 degrees for the bend and then four and a half degrees for the correction factor. And that's all based off that test bin that we're gonna do. Okay, now that we have that part selected, we can go to calculate. And I'm gonna bring you in a little closer here. And you can see that we have our first bend mark. We need to go to 36.59 inches and bend 84 degrees. And then we're gonna go down to the next mark, 84.58 inches, bend another 84 degrees, and then we can cut our tubing off at 129.98. And this is all calculated on the layout of straight tube, meaning you measure from zero, put a mark 36.59, put a second mark 84.58, put a third mark 129.98, and you do all that on the straight tubing before you ever put it in the bender. And then it also, another note down here, you note know, one inch additional added to both ends for the final cut fit. And that's just to give you room to make any adjustments. So, You'll see in the videos that I use, I mark all the way around and what I use is a hose clamp. I snug the hose clamp up to the tubing. I use it to mark. It makes a really good way to trace all the way around the tubing. And then I go ahead and mark all of these and then I leave the hose clamp on whichever one I'm marking next. That way in case I spray some lubricant or uh, tube, you know, uh, brake cleaner or something on there, I don't accidentally take my mark off and have no way to get back to it. So one of the things I failed to tell you right at the beginning there was the tools you were going to need to get this job done, at, at least to the stage where we're at yet. You need a tape measure. You need some kind of protractor. I prefer this one because I can lay, lay it on there and then move different angles. This one's a good one as well because, I mean, I've used it in tight areas, small areas when you're trying to get it. But these are the two I use most. And then you need a pencil and a piece of paper to write it all down on. Then you transfer that to the board. And after that, you can either use that bend it online software, or you can lay it all out on the floor. And if you know the radius of your dies, then you can calculate with some algebra, trigonometry, <laughs> um, the, how much tubing it's gonna take to make that bend. The other thing you can do without any math, to, hardly any math to speak of, is once you've drawn that whole picture out like we did back there, online in full size, you measure the center of the tube all the way through there using your tape measure all the way around, and you have the same number. You get to the same length. You know where you're, if you've done a few bend, test bends with your bender, you know how much tubing it takes to make the bend, so you know where you put, where you start the tube in the bender, so that the the radius starts in the right place and you use those bits of information which we we actually still need one i mean it tells us where to start the bend but we need to know where the bend starts in our tubing bender to put that point in place so that's another reason you know i've never bent any six or any two inch tubing in my bender so we need to bend it to see how far we can get with these particular dies and we need to see where the bend starts in relation to where to some reference point so that we can can put put our tubing in in the right place. So that I've got the tubing down now. We're going to clean it up a little bit, get it cut, and then go ahead and, and do a couple test bends. We've got the two inch tubing loaded and it's level with the machine. Doesn't matter what angle that is as long as they're equal. And then I've got my pointer set at zero. What we're going to do is we're going to bend our first bend. We're going to go about 45 degrees and I'm gonna just make another I've got a, a mark here next to the die and I'll make another mark wherever 45 degrees ends up and I'll make a third one where we get to 90 degrees it'll give us a pretty good idea of how much tubing we're using to come around this die I've also laid the seam uh, straight up just so I can 
uh, have a reference point if I need to take any other measurements. So I'm going to get a measurement to the beginning of that die to the end of the tubing. So it's nine and three quarter inches from here to the end of the tubing right now. I'm going to write that number down. So nine and three quarter, and then as we bend this, we'll get some more marks and we'll get an idea how much tubing we're using. 90. Tell you what, I'm going to stop at 30. So that's 30 degrees. And then this bender, this for spring back, I've always had to add five degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 35 and we'll mark it. Now let's go to 45 and we'll add the five, so that'll be 50. We've got all our scribe marks on there now. So what we can do is go ahead and move the tubing from the fender. Four, eight, four, eight, six, seven, eight, eighty-eight and a half. So we've got the first bend. Our second mark is already on the tubing down here. So we'll go ahead and release everything so we can slide the tube, which is kind of a pain in the butt because you have to get this pin out and it just, this tubing is, is catching on it and everything. So it's just kind of difficult. But anyway, so we'll release that, pull this pin, let this part swing in, and then we can try and get this pin out. All right, that freed up. Get this one out. We can pull our tubing down. I have a little clamp on here. All right, so once again, we need need this tube so that it's in the right orientation when we make our bend. Let me back you off here just a little bit. So now you can see right now I have this just kind of angled down and that's not gonna work. It needs to be up here somewhere. All right, we're on our line now. We're at our second measurement here at the die. And we just gotta get all this level now. So our, our uh, bender is at about a one degree angle here. So we need this to be at that same one degree angle. We're level in both planes, or we're equal in both planes. They're not necessarily level. And we're ready to bend this next bend. So once we get a little pressure on the dies, I can take this jack stand back here out of the way because this is going to come all the way around on us. Um, so let's get started. Let spray, like I said, I sprayed some lube inside the die, so we'll spray some on here and on this other die. So we're going to pull a measurement from one leg to the other here just to make sure we're there before we, you know, because we could always add another degree or something. And 59 and 8 was our max width. We're just a hair under that. So we'll want to pull it in just a little bit. We'll use a ratchet strap to do that just to squeeze it just where we have the, a nice even gap between it and the inside of the fender. So really, we're, we're done. We've got a nice bend. Everything looks to be in the same plane. And we can go ahead, take this out of the bender, cut the legs to the, to the right angle, and get this tacked into the truck. All right, we've got the roll bar setting in here, sitting in here. I've got some magnets on each side. And what I've done is just 
set the base, uh, you know, I picked up a place that I can measure from on both sides, which was the edge of the door jamb, and made sure that the base is exactly the same, the, or the bottom of the, of the roll bar is the same distance back on both sides. And then I'm going to weld this side first, but then I lined it up with the, we'll call it the B pillar here, in the roof so that whenever the roof is on they're in line. I couldn't get it directly behind it because it wouldn't fit with the seat but I at least want the line to be the same. And then once this one's welded in and I have a little spacer down here to keep it off of the body. So once this one's got probably three or four really good tacks on the base plate then I'll come to this side do any little bit of tweaking I need to do and get it tacked to the base plate. The base plates right now just have a couple screws holding them down to the floor. Once there's some really good solid tacks on there, then I'll take those screws out, take the whole thing out, take it outside, weld up around. That way I get to the back sides of the weld, so or the, of the tubing, so that everything's welded solid. Then I can come back and put it back in. Um, I got good clearance up here. It's not touching anything. Uh, I got clearance over here to the plastic. I think it fits really well. And in my bending, I got within about um, 0.2 degrees of getting them identical, so close enough. Um, so once we get this tacked to the plates, welded to the floor, then we'll come off of this and start building our down bars to the back. So you could do this a couple ways. You could just get everything really well tacked in, build the down bars, and then take the top off, lift the thing out, weld it all up and put it back in. And that would absolutely work. I just really don't want to be taking the top off anytime soon, or at least not until the bottom is undercoated and then set on the frame, so that I keep it as rigid as I can. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and weld up the base plate solid and weld them to the floor. Then on the back, I'll do the same thing. I'll weld the base, I'll, I'll tack it in, get it all tacked to the roof up here, or to the upper bar up here, um, and then I'll weld in as much as I can, knowing that I don't have to worry about getting to the back side of some of these welds, because the top is eventually gonna come off, and then we'll paint the roll bar from there. All right, you can see where I burned in the welds, so I'm gonna go ahead and weld that foot to the bar, and it's freestanding now, so. Um, I've got the strap on there so that I could squeeze it a little bit to make it easier to get it out of the truck and to put it back in. So knock this out real quick and then put it back in the truck, weld it to the floor. So you can see I've got it welded to the plate. The plate's back in with a screw or two in it to hold it to the floor nice and tight. Same on this side. And I've verified that the bars are still parallel to the windows. Might get, because of the angle, it might not look quite right, but that, that bar and the B-pillar are about as close to perfectly parallel as I, at least as I can make it. And that's looking from the outside. Uh, same on this one over here. So I, I got that one in, happy with it, and then I tweaked this one to get it exactly where I wanted it. So now that those are done, we'll go ahead and stitch weld the plate to the floor. And then I'll not do the rosettes just yet. That way when I put the plate from underneath in, I can burn pretty hot down into that uh, hole and try and get a good weld in through the sheet metal and into the other plate as well. It's all stitch welded in you know, about an inch and a half, two inches at a time. If I was going around a corner, I'd kind of start and maybe do three quarters of an inch each way. And uh, then I'll weld in those rosettes, like I said, when I have the bottom plate already in place. So so it's pretty, pretty sturdy now. Um, and if we were just wanting a show bar, it'd be enough. But we're gonna do a, go ahead and do a uh, down bar, I keep calling it. 